Elon Musk doesn't just dream of rockets, he dreams of survival. One night on live TV, he casually suggested something unthinkable. Let's nuke Mars's poles. But why would anyone drop nuclear bombs on another planet? It sounded like madness, but beneath the shock was fear and hope. Fear that Earth's time is limited, hope that Mars could give humanity a second chance. That shocking statement, it only makes sense when you understand Musk's larger vision. Human survival has always depended on pushing boundaries, crossing oceans, flying through skies, and even stepping on the moon. But Elon Musk is thinking bigger. For him, Earth is fragile, vulnerable to climate change, asteroids, or even human conflict. His solution? It's a multi-planetary species. Mars, despite being cold and barren, is his prime target. But there's a catch. Mars is brutal. Temperatures can plummet to around minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The air is so thin that humans couldn't breathe without a suit. Dust storms can engulf the entire planet for weeks, and radiation, unshielded by a thick atmosphere, constantly bombards its surface. Instead of seeing these as deal breakers, Musk sees them as engineering problems, puzzles to solve. If Mars is so hostile, how do we take the first step? The first obstacle is shelter. On Earth, we take air, warmth, and radiation protection for granted. On Mars, each must be engineered. NASA and SpaceX envision underground habitats using Martian soil called regolith to shield settlers from cosmic radiation. Inflatable domes covered in protective material may become the first Martian neighborhoods. Then comes food and water. You can't just ship groceries 140 million miles across space. Instead, scientists are working on hydroponics, growing crops without soil, recycling water, and harnessing sunlight through artificial greenhouses. Melting ice beneath Mars's surface could provide both drinking water and fuel for rockets, since water can be split into hydrogen and oxygen. The goal is not survival, but sustainability. Mars needs systems that recycle everything – air, water, waste – because resupply from Earth will be rare, expensive, and dangerous. But even if we master shelters and crops, there's still a bigger threat. Mars has almost no atmosphere. Its air pressure is just 1% of Earth's. Without a thick atmosphere, liquid water evaporates instantly, radiation is deadly, and breathing is impossible. This is where Musk's most radical idea enters the picture. If Mars has no atmosphere, why not create one? That's why, when Musk casually suggested nuking Mars's poles on late-night TV, people thought he was joking. Give me the fast way. The fast way is, is drop thermonuclear weapons over the poles. You're a super villain! <laughs> he wasn't. His reasoning was simple. Beneath Mars's polar ice caps lie massive amounts of frozen carbon dioxide. Detonate nuclear bombs above the poles, and you release that CO2 into the atmosphere. The theory is that more CO2 means a thicker atmosphere, which traps heat through the greenhouse effect. If Mars gets warmer, ice melts further, releasing even more gas, creating a self-sustaining cycle. Over time, Mars could develop conditions closer to Earth, warmer with enough pressure to keep liquid water stable. In Musk's vision, this is the first step to terraforming Mars. Still, why leap to such an extreme? The answer lies in time. Traditional solutions move painfully slow. Scientists have proposed massive orbital mirrors that beam sunlight onto Mars, slowly heating it. Others suggest factories pumping greenhouse gases. But these methods, they take centuries, maybe millennia, to have a noticeable impact. Nukes, on the other hand, deliver instant energy. A detonation releases heat far faster than any mirror or factory. In Musk's mind, speed is everything. Humanity doesn't have centuries to wait. If Earth faces disaster, we need Mars habitable within decades. But here's where vision collides with reality. Studies, including a detailed one from NASA, suggest Musk's plan might not work as intended. Even if every ounce of CO2 on Mars were released, it wouldn't be enough to create an atmosphere like Earth's. The greenhouse effect would be too weak, and much of the gas would escape into space. In other words, nuking Mars could warm it temporarily, but not terraform it completely. The planet's weak gravity and lack of a magnetic field 
make holding onto an atmosphere very difficult. Yet, Musk isn't necessarily aiming for a perfect Earth copy. Even a slightly thicker, warmer atmosphere could make survival easier, reducing radiation, stabilizing temperatures, and cutting the cost of building habitats. In his mind, incremental progress is still progress. But if nuclear bombs aren't enough to terraform Mars, what other options do we have? Scientists are exploring a range of innovative, if ambitious, solutions. One concept is the use of orbital mirrors that are giant satellites stationed in space that would reflect concentrated sunlight onto the planet's surface. By slowly raising temperatures, these mirrors could melt pockets of ice and release gases trapped beneath, kickstarting a gradual warming cycle. Another proposal involves building vast greenhouse factories on Mars itself. These machines would pump out super-powerful artificial gases, such as plethorocarbons, which trap heat thousands of times more effectively than carbon dioxide. Unlike nukes, this method it would be slow, but over centuries, it would create a much thicker, more stable atmosphere. Perhaps the boldest idea comes from NASA, an enormous artificial magnetic shield placed at a key point between Mars and the Sun. Such a shield could protect the planet from solar winds, the very force that stripped away Mars's original atmosphere, giving the planet a chance to retain any gases we release. None of these solutions are simple. Each demands enormous energy, resources, and time. But taken together, they sketch a roadmap where small technological steps accumulate into the large-scale transformation of an entire world. So. How do we actually transform Mars from a barren wasteland into a thriving human colony? The journey won't happen overnight. Instead, scientists and visionaries like Elon Musk imagine it unfolding in three distinct phases, each building on the last. The first phase is the survival phase. In this stage, early missions will focus entirely on the basics – shelter, air, water, and food. Habitats will need to be built quickly, likely underground or buried beneath Martian soil to shield settlers from radiation and the planet's violent dust storms. Recycling systems will become the backbone of survival, turning waste into usable resources. SpaceX's Starship will also play a crucial role here, ferrying not only the first explorers, but also essential cargo, equipment, and life support systems to get colonies off the ground. Once survival is secured, the mission enters the stability phase. This is where settlements scale up into something resembling small cities. Larger farms and greenhouses take root, infrastructure expands, and experiments in atmospheric engineering begin. Techniques such as localized nuclear heating or orbital mirrors may help create pockets of habitable zones, areas where the environment becomes more forgiving and less dependent on sealed habitats. The long-term vision is the terraforming phase. If technology and time permit, full-scale planetary engineering can begin, melting vast ice reserves, forming rivers and lakes, and eventually making the atmosphere breathable without a spacesuit. This phase could take centuries, but each step moves humanity closer. In this sense, Musk's nuclear idea it isn't the final answer, it's the spark meant to ignite this grand sequence. But before we get too carried away, there's a deeper question we need to ask. Should we even be doing this at all? Nuking another planet raises ethical questions. Mars may not host advanced life, but what if microbial organisms exist beneath its surface? Terraforming could wipe them out before we even discover them. Then there's the risk of failure. What if nuclear fallout makes Mars less habitable, not more? Or if an accident contaminates the planet before colonization even begins? Critics argue that instead of reshaping another world, we should focus on fixing Earth. Musk, however, frames it differently – survival insurance. Earth can be both cherished and protected while still preparing for the unthinkable. And that brings us to another overlooked challenge – not technological, but human. Technology can solve the problems of food, shelter, and atmosphere, but one challenge often overlooked is psychological survival. Living on Mars won't just be about surviving physically, it'll test the human mind in ways never experienced before. It might feel like months of endless isolation, a blood-red desert stretching in every direction, and the constant knowledge that a single system failure could be fatal. The lack of open skies, oceans, and familiar landscapes could trigger depression, anxiety, and even cabin fever among settlers. Communication delays with Earth, up to 22 minutes each way, would make conversations feel slow and disconnected, intensifying loneliness. 
To combat this, scientists are already studying the effects of confinement in analog missions on Earth, like those in Antarctica or in desert habitats. Virtual reality could help recreate Earth-like environments, while community building and strong cultural rituals may become as essential as oxygen. Colonizing Mars, in the end, isn't only an engineering problem, it's a psychological and social one. If humans can adapt mentally, as well as physically, the dream of building a new world becomes much more than a fiction, it becomes a matter of resilience and human spirit. Which is exactly why Musk pushes his most extreme ideas in the first place. At its core, Musk's plan it isn't about bombs, it's about urgency. He knows the clock is ticking. By throwing out radical ideas, he sparks conversations, accelerates research, and forces people to consider solutions they'd normally dismiss. The real reason Musk is talking about nuking Mars it isn't blind madness, it's a catalyst. It shifts the debate from is Mars possible to how do we make it possible. And in doing so, he reframes humanity's future, not as a question of survival, but of ambition. Elon Musk's dream of nuking Mars's poles is wild, controversial, and possibly unworkable. Yet, it embodies the spirit of exploration itself, trying the impossible when the alternative is standing still. Mars is hostile, unforgiving, and dangerous, but every problem it poses also carries a solution waiting to be engineered. Whether through nukes, mirrors, or magnetic shields, Musk's message is clear. Humanity must think boldly, or risk never leaving Earth at all. Because, in the end, the question isn't whether we can terraform Mars, it's whether we're willing to try. If this journey into Mars's future sparked your imagination, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss the next big leap into space exploration.